You ever just look at an industry and after being exposed to it for a long time, you think to yourself, well, I've seen everything. And now that you've seen everything, anything you were exposed to loses its impact regardless of how good it is. Well, that's how I feel about Texas. Not the state, because dear lord are they a mess. I'm talking about the country music scene of Texas, which a lot of people associate as the main alternative to Nashville. Somewhere to go for actual music that sounds country. Artists like Cody Jinks, Flatland Cavalry, John Bowman all hail from there and bring a lot of passion you normally don't see from Nashville. But yeah, truth be told, as someone who loves Appalachian in the Canadian side of country, I feel like I'm experiencing a burnout from Texas country. Every album just ends up sounding the same. This guy has buttery vocals. It has a rootsy honky tonk sound. The subject material of wholesome love, red dirt roads, drinking whiskey, I just don't find it all impressive anymore. Not saying any of it is bad, it's all pretty good. But that's the thing, it's just pretty good. Say what you want about Nashville, but at least they uphold creativity to a degree. Texas country is very inclusive and likes to be in its own little safe bubble with no room to grow. I don't want to be invested in someone making the same album over and over again, because how is that artist growing when they try to make the same record? And that's how I feel about this album. Yeah, there's this guy, you probably haven't heard of him, he's called Cody Johnson. He's just the biggest guy to come out of Texas in the past 10 years. Cody Johnson is known for his smooth vocals that go down real easy, and he often puts an impeccable performance for his records. He signed a deal with Warner Music, which rarely happens, and is pretty much allowed to make whatever he wants because his brand of country sells. In a similar fashion to an artist such as Carly Pierce, where they can bring traditional sounds in a way that's both mass appealing and of actual quality. His last album, Ain't Nothing To It, was really good and among one of my favorite mainstream albums album to 2019, and he's really solidified himself as someone who's here to stay and shake up the mainstream world of Nashville. A true man against the machine. Anyway, Human is pretty good. The problem like I foreshadowed is that Human isn't that different from his last album. It's to a point where I can really just regurgitate my thoughts on his last album straight onto here. All the songs are really good for the same reasons. Cody gives a passionate performance capable of displaying an inspirational vibe with Till You Can't to a really romantic tone with Treasure, which might actually be my favorite Kojo song now. It's calm, well balanced, and just truly wholesome, and while not the most superb writing, it's just phenomenal comfort food. Stronger is a true tour de force on the album with a powerful build of instrumentals and vocals balancing this sundering presence with strong imagery of lighthouses and hurricanes, and needles in a thread patching him together emotionally and possibly Possibly physically given the fact that Kojo was a bull rider for Rodeo. Sad Songs and Waltzes was a great cover from one of the greatest artists and songwriters Willie Nelson. Kojo does it justice but Willie is clearly out of his prime and it leaves me sad knowing he's in this frail state where he can't really sing that well on a song anymore. There's a strong sense of musicianship especially on songs such as Let's Build a Fire with the instrumentals growing more and more out of control as if it's a fire growing wild. I found that little detail pretty brilliant. When things get serious and somber the band can easily shift into that vibe back up all the emotions Kojo puts into the writing and his delivery, with When It Comes To You being a great example of this. There was this one hiccup on Honky Tonk Hardwood Floors and the percussion's rhythm around the 1 minute 20 second marker, where it feels like the drummer had his heart stop for a split second and everyone fell out of tempo and then it picked itself back up. It was weird to leave that in rather than fixing that, but for all I know, it was probably intentional. But beyond the songs I've mentioned and praised, what truly is the difference both structurally and in their messages between his other albums? Essentially, none, because these are all the same albums. I don't hate the music, but I don't have much investment or emotional resonance because it went into these projects, and it's only gone down exponentially since then. Actually, I take that back. There was this one song I couldn't stand, which is Cowboy Scale 1 to 10, where Kojo seems to try this speaking slurring dialect, which reminds me of how Johnny Cash would do a lot of his songs, and while one could say it's him paying respect to the man in black, it just sounds so awful, and Kojo comes off incredibly awkward. It sounds like something I would hear on a public television network, extremely forced, and it just raises the awkwardness in the atmosphere. Plus, we got another generic support and honor the troops line. Rather than giving actual support to our soldiers, pointless and hollow shoutouts will do because don't you miss Bush era country? And lyrically, is a whole other can of worms. On most Eric Church records, Eric puts all the emotional weight in the lyricism because he isn't the strongest vocalist. So while he isn't singing like Stapleton, he speaks volumes more with what he is saying. Kojo is the opposite on this album. He is all vocal and little substance. Ain't Nothing To It was a lyrically sharp project. Songs like Dear Rodeo and Monday Morning Merle were incredible songs that said a lot. What even happened on this project? It is such a major downsize to the previous album. 
Take the supposed jam of honky-tonk hardwood floors, boots and hats and pearl snaps wall to wall, fiddles singing, cowgirls swinging, keep them coming through the doors. Or in the ninth track, I Always Wanted To, where he describes all these things he didn't do throughout his life. His response is, I never did all I wanted to do, but I always wanted to. What happened to the nuance of Monday Morning Moral? Rather than make us think about it, this album instead wants to tell us directly how to feel. Have everything on the album be face value, because God forbid an album make you think. Then there's Made a Home, which is kind of sexist. But let's not worry about that, we gotta address the elephant in the room. The double album. I will thank Kojo for not making an album over two dozen songs long, but enjoying more than 15 songs without getting bored is a massive stretch and this album definitely didn't accomplish that. I already made a video addressing my problems with this mediocre trend and all my critiques still apply here. There is no correlation between the first half of this double release to the second. Most songs are just a kaleidoscope of really good ideas that are just trying to stick to the wall. And while a fair amount do stick, you really just question. What was it all for? What was the message of this album? Is the message that we are all the same, or we're only human? The album didn't try to get that across. Trying to portray human nature as just overwhelmingly positive is just odd and very unrealistic to me. And for some reason, album 1 ends with I Always Wanted To, which is the story of Kojo or this protagonist dying. What? This is the halfway point of the record. Why are you doing this? What are you trying to tell us? A cycle of rebirth because in the second album he seems fine and the driving motivations for this album is just really questionable. Why wasn't this the ending of the album? It would make so much more sense for someone living a life well lived. But we have Kojo setting up his life with his wife near the end of the album and him seeing his daughter's future in the beginning. Did Kojo not put in the time accounting for the track order to create a consistent album narrative? I was just left with so many questions by the end of my first listen. But the music is just so unhateable you really ignore that. Kojo just has this charisma that's really hard for you to dislike it because he puts so much effort into his music. Instrumentally it's very impressive, it has a strong tradition presence and as previously mentioned Kojo does a good job vocally if this is your introduction to Kojo it's a really enjoyable album if you listen to every album up to this point you just find yourself repeating the same compliments and they get tiring after a while to the point where you ask yourself why am I bothering with this inclusive safe album this album just felt meticulous for me, even though critically it is pretty good as a standalone album, even if it is a mess. There are songs I take out obviously like I Always Wanted To and Cowboy Scale of 1 to 10, but it doesn't bother me compared to other double albums I've had to experience this year. I wish less time went into fleshing out the musical side of things and much more into the lyrical side which for the most part is messy at best and mediocre at worst overall. I think Human is just so polished and a rehash of way too similar ideas his other albums had that if Kojo made an incredibly awful album instead, I'd find that album much more interesting than what Human turned out to be. If you know what to expect after 3 times, it loses its impact. Rating wise, I'm feeling a light 7 out of 10 critically, but for me personally, I'm somewhere around a decent 6 out of 10. My issues are definitely just me, they aren't really issues that can be universally recognized. I'm probably going to piss off the Kojo stands with that rating, but hey, I'm only human.